Illinois can win on the road. Welcome into the Illini Inquirer podcast. I'm Jeremy Warner. Derek Piper is in Lincoln. I'm at the home ranch here uh, as Joey and Derek might get to uh, hit up the hay market here uh, after this game. It's a sweet uh, little college town, but more importantly, that's a sweet, pretty big win for Illinois basketball as they take care of business and get a much needed road victory. Their first true road win of the year, 76 to 50 over Nebraska. And Derek, I, I wrote in uh, my quick hits here, like it's not easy to get a road win at Illinois. Illinois has had that the last couple of years, some close wins uh, at Nebraska. And of course, Purdue went to overtime to get a victory. Uh, Iowa left with a 16 point loss. So this, this is, I, I wouldn't say, hey, this is just Nebraska. You won by 26. Uh, this is, a, especially for where this team has been the last month or so, I feel like this is a monster victory. Yeah, really just to be able to roll the momentum over from a huge back, bounce back win against Wisconsin. We saw the offense be able to flow really well, sharing the ball, uh, being able to get the high assist totals, be able to knock down threes. And while the three ball was not falling early, and Illinois did get some open looks and just weren't able to capitalize enough early on, they, they started to get that going more uh, as the game played out. Terrence downhill, I mean, this has been a, a really good defense at keeping guys out of the paint and making it tough to score at the rim. Terrence just couldn't be stopped. Couldn't, Wisconsin couldn't do anything with them. Uh, Nebraska obviously couldn't do that e either. And it was just nice to see more and more of a, a collective effort. I mean, five guys in double figures just seemed like uh, everybody that was out there on the floor at some point gave this team something. Uh, I know we'll talk all about Ty Rogers, who's the first that was the first thing that Brad Underwood said as he walked into uh, the post game press conference. So a team that just seems to be vibing a lot well, more more together. You know, they're, they're vibing really well together. Uh, there's a lot to feel good about right now. It still is only uh, two wins in a row, but at the same time, this is a this was a pivotal spot because if you would have dropped to one and four in the league play, uh, and to be, you know, you're already kind of Joe Lenardi had you quote unquote on the bubble going into this game. If you would have dropped that game, that would have been really tough. But yeah, like you said with Nebraska, like they blew out Iowa here, took Purdue to overtime, they went on the road and, and won at Creighton. So they've given some some good teams a tough time, if not just flat out beat them. And Illinois didn't allow that to be the case. Yeah, as you said, an NCAA tournament team gets this win, but we would have thought that of Northwestern too. I, I think Northwestern's better than, than Nebraska, but still, uh, to get this win, I, I, I don't poo-poo. I, I think this is a, a really uh, big victory for Illinois. Uh, and more importantly, Derek, they're just playing well. Like, they are playing as a team right now, right? Like, this is the best they've looked by the eye test in back-to-back -back games since November. Uh, really since UCLA, Virginia, Syracuse, that run they were having. Uh, this team, what happened after Northwestern? <laughs> because Brad Underwood obviously was searching for something with all the things he was throwing out publicly, changing offense, changing defense, changing the starting lineup. We know one variable is Sky Clark left, and I'm not going to put it all on Sky was some malcontent on the team, but I think Jaden Epps clearly knows his role now. Ty Rogers is playing his role, and we'll get into Ty here. But something has changed the last couple of days, um, or the last couple of weeks, where, as you wrote, the vibes are off. The vibes are much better right now, Derek, after back-to-back -back wins. Yeah, they definitely are. Uh, I just think it was – a real sink or swim moment for Illinois coming off the Northwestern loss. You're one three in the league. You're going back home to place face Wisconsin in a, in a game that you really needed. And you had lost three straight high major games by double digits. And uh, while Brad was saying we're making some progress behind the scenes and practice offensively, it, it hadn't translated to the court. And some of those vets, like especially Meyer and Hawkins were still taking some hero ball shots and breaking off plays playing uh, outside of the, the construct of the, Part of it's just reps. I mean, I think that they'll tell you that as far as the being able to figure out the spread and and be able to because that's such a I mean, any offense is a rhythm game. It's a it's a game of having guys being able to cut at the right times, hit the right passes, be able to shooters to be spotted up and, and just have that ball pop. But uh, I think that now this team is, has been able to establish an identity at that end of the floor. They know they want to play inside out. I know Dane, because of the way that they doubled the post, uh, that made it get going, but uh, I thought they did a good job once again of, of getting into the teeth of the defense, being able to kick it out, and and really just the way that also kick out and shot. It was a kick out, maybe a swing around the perimeter and find that open man. So uh, this is a team that just 
seems to be on the same page. Uh, they're making shots. They're playing well. They're playing with energy. Obviously, defensively, with what they're doing for the most part, other than a lull there in the second half, they were really, really good. Uh, and it's a, a team that, yeah, I, I think backs against the wall. And while Sky, I, I think that was just kind of even more of a wake-up call of, like, this thing could go south if we don't fix things right now. And I know that they've talked about Terrence being – big on leadership. Ty mentioned tonight that they've done more team bonding stuff. They've watched more games, whether it be NBA, college, uh, together as a unit. And uh, I, I just think it's a team that knew they had to figure it out. And with Brad repping this thing in practice, it's clear that he made a good pivot. Once again, I know it's going to have to play out as we go across uh, the rest of this month and, and deep into Big Ten play. But the returns right now are really good. Yeah, Derek, and you mentioned Terrence Shannon there. Uh, we'd heard all about his leadership, and of course we know the <laughs> moment that Brad Underwood had about leadership after the Penn State game, right? But the last two games, I think we've seen the alpha emerge here. I, I think we've seen Terrence Shannon be like, this is my team, I'm the baddest player on the floor, and I can get wherever I want and score, and I feel like the rest of the team – uh, has really fed off that. Bruce Weber, who's doing a really good job uh, on BTN as an analyst, was was talking about it's a lot easier when your best player is the leader and is playing well and everyone else seems to feed off that. What are you seeing from Terrence Shannon the last couple games? Yeah, like you said, it's just aggressiveness. It is being that guy that is going to set the tone for the offense. And, uh, again, Nebraska wants to be able to pack the paint. They're, they're – structured to be able to help on drives and, and everything. And while they had even sometimes traffic waiting for him at the rim or, or guys really anticipating his left-hand drive, like he just refused to be denied. He was going downhill. Uh, he was able to to finish around the basket, uh, hit a couple of threes here again tonight. And uh, then he gets after it. It's even beyond just the scoring, the fact that, you know, he calls in four offensive rebounds and, and get pushes him to 11 total and gets a double-double with four assists. So he's just doing, uh, you know, it, it, a number of facets. It's beyond just the scoring. So, uh, yeah, 20-plus in back-to-back games, first time since mid-November. You go back to the Monmouth game when he had 30. Obviously, the UCLA game when he had 29, I believe, and hit those eight threes. So uh, we'll see if the three ball ultimately is able to come all the way back, as we saw earlier in the season. But it's just been downhill, Terrence Shannon. And it's I mean, he's standing next to him, and sometimes you forget it. At, you know, when you go through the, the season and sometimes you sit at the podium, that dude is just huge. <laughs> he is huge. 6'6", six, six, and that strong and, and how fast he is. I mean, he's he's an athletic marvel, and he's just he's making uh, life heck for the Big Ten here recently. He's an NBA player, and there's not many wings in the Big Ten, especially in Nebraska, right, Like that, that can match up with him. And, and I think he's realizing that. Like uh, the scouting report, make him go right. Well, he he went right a couple times uh, tonight, and I, I just think that's so important. Like people just can't physically match his size, athleticism, first step, all of that. And when he gets in transition, he should be licking his chops. Uh, and he's been starting to do that today. But Derek, this this is unselfish basketball, right? I mean, Matthew Meyer. I'm going to shout him out again today. Just moving the ball better. He had one or two shots where he was in isolation. I'm okay with that every once in a while from him. He didn't shoot all that well. But he's gotten to the free throw line here recently. Coleman, 12 points, five assists, four straight games and double figures for Coleman, uh, which he had four straight in single digits. He's starting to emerge again. Um, Jaden Epps really asserted himself late in this game. Uh, it was quiet early, and Tominaga got him on defense a little bit early. And R.J. Melendez, man, uh, his first double-digit scoring game since December 2nd, that kid just kept shooting. And it's been ugly sometimes, but uh, he had some big shots tonight. So I, I just think it's great to see that offense share the ball, and it looks like it's contagious right now. Is is that just a team gelling? Is that the spread? What do you think? I think it's a combination of it. I think the spread puts them in some good actions. You think about that two-man game that it's creating, and that's something that when Coleman's involved in that, he, he can – be someone that pops out and hit those pick and pop threes like we saw against Wisconsin. It can get Terrence going downhill. Uh, it can get you some cutters to the basket. Uh, I do think that they need to continue to try to get you know baseline cuts. I, I loved. I hated the shot that Matthew Meyer took with that contested uh, hand in your face three. But I love the fact that Dane went and got the offensive rebound and Meyer cut right to the basket uh, and got fouled there. So uh, 13 offensive rebounds for a team that shot it pretty well uh, on the night. So I think that. Being able to go to the glass has been something nice to see. 
And, and yeah, it's just Epps being able to get inside the arc and be able to hit his pull up jumper or finish in the lane. And it, it sync with each other. And by having a, a structured plan, possession after possession, instead of try to create something and have guys off the ball that maybe didn't know what to do. And we're probably just, you know, RJ was standing in the corner a lot and he wasn't the only one guys were just kind of standing and ball watching. So, uh, and I'll got to give Coleman credit for a guy that took a lot of due heat for his turnover issues. I think he's had two turnovers in each of the last two games, which is a, a big improvement. And the, the five assists, two turnovers tonight, that's more the ratio you want for him. Uh, that big momentum dunk early where he stares down the Nebraska bench and, uh, and then hit a three, too. So uh, it's been good for Coleman. I hope that he continues to take care of the ball. And, and then, yeah, just the assist numbers show a team that's just being a lot more in sync and in rhythm. Yeah, the assist numbers are going up. The turnovers are going down. I think that's back-to-back -back games of 11 turnovers, which Derek is a huge – Huge improvement for this team and uh, points off turnovers was big for this team. Fast break points were big. Second chance points were as well. I, I want to do one more thing before we get to the, the Ty Rogers segment of this, which I know the people are waiting for. Dane Danger had four points. I think that's back-to-back -back games, uh, four points for him. He is as impactful as anybody right now. His defense is just elite at the rim. I think they only had him for three blocks. It felt like he had 10. Um, Derek Walker, I know he got in foul trouble and, uh, Nebraska got in a ton of foul trouble throughout this game, but Derek Walker was two of seven from the field, three assists, five points. Um, Dane Danger is elite as a paint protector, as a rim protector right now. Like I, I want to start the big, uh, all big 10 defensive team, um, discussion for him because he is great on that end of the floor. Yeah, Derek Walker coming off a career high, 22 points, had 22 points against Creighton and has played really well here in the last month or so, really all season is a guy that leads the team in scoring. Whenever he got the ball on the block, Dane's long arms. I mean, you're talking about a, a seven foot six, seven foot seven wingspan and a lot. And I, I know a lot of people just kind of the drop coverage and the, the feel for when to kind of tag the, the ball and, and get back on the roller and, and being able to get high hands out there and contest every shot. And he is making a huge difference for a team that came into tonight. They were 11th in the country in two point field goal defense. I think they're 13th in block shot rate. He obviously is impacting both of those. And uh, I know that while Nebraska in the second half was getting to go into the rim a little bit uh, for the most part, it's a team that once again, is not giving up a whole lot there in the paint. And, and when Dane's out there in that drop, he's, he's a big factor for, and, and a big reason why that's happening. Yeah, Derek, I'm showing on our live YouTube page um, the block percentage for Illinois. They're 13th in the country. Uh, Brad Underwood's Illinois teams have never been better than 257th. Uh, that, that's Dane Danger a lot. I mean, Coleman Hawkins is part of that. Do you think Brad will ever play anything other than drop coverage again? Because that that is what is working for him, whether it's Kofi, whether it's Dane. Uh, he needs to keep recruiting those kind of big men, me thinks. I, I think it's working pretty well right now. I know that it, is, it does need to be combined with guards that can get through screens. Because if you if you have a situation where guards are getting screens and you get a good pull-up shooter, might even see one in, in like Tyson Walker coming to town on Friday, that will test Illinois' drop coverage. But if, if a guy like Sincere and Jaden, who continue to – I mean, Sincere is all over whoever has the ball at, at all times and is doing a great job there. I think if Illinois' guards can, can fight through screens, you got Dane waiting and drop, that's a, a really good combo. And, and – Dane right now is – now Illinois was a good two-point field goal defense with Kofi there and really, you know, kind of when drivers would see him in, around the rim, well, he maybe didn't have as many blocks as, as some other big men out there, did a good job. But Dane's feel and drop coverage is better than Kofi's, at least from what we've seen so far, and that's that's good to see. No, you're right. With the, the way he stunts at people, the way he just always has his arms up, he's moving. Um, he's got a feel for that that I think uh, we shouldn't underrate. Uh, and he's such an important part of this team. Let's talk about it, Derek. Ty Rogers, you you had your freshman playing well and Jade Neps, your guy. Joey's had his guy, Sincere Harris. Offense not going so well, but defense, he's fantastic. Ty Rogers, my guy in this class. 
None of us picked Sky, by the way. Um, so maybe that's working out well for us, at least. Um, but Ty Rogers, 4.7 rebounds, really pestered Sam Grussell, especially late in that first half, early uh, in the second half. Uh, Grussell was like the only thing going for them offensively for a long time. And that's, I think you make a good point. I think Jade Nepp struggled a little bit on the ball defensively against better teams. They can take advantage of that drop coverage a little bit. But but Ty, um, starting to assert himself, Derek. He's got more of a role now, it seems, with Sky Clark out of this rotation. So what stood out most to you about Ty Rogers? I think it's just the confidence and the aggression for a guy that has not had the the first two months of his freshman season that he would have hoped for. And I, I don't know if it was the Northwestern game. One of those recent games, whether it was late December, early January, he only logged like two or three minutes in one of those ball games. So to be able to still be able to, when he gets on the floor, come out, make an impact, look like he's confident. I mean, being able to make some of those spin moves and, and attempts around the rim like he did against Wisconsin, look at like a guy that expected the ball to go in. Now, some of them didn't early on, but I loved the aggression. I loved the the moves that he made. And, and some of those will go down as, as he continues to progress. But like diving on the floor, that's that's exactly the type of Ty Rogers that we expected to see this year. Someone that's going to make all those effort plays is going to be so gritty and t- tenacious and uh, just have the motor running up to 100 at all times. So uh, and we talked to him. Joey's writing up the story right now uh, that you can check on a lot of and it's someone that senses something building and it's not just him. Obviously Brad Underwood has been talking about it recently. Like he's going to keep coming on and be a big factor for this team. But I just think it is just kind of the continued junkyard dog type that we've seen out of sincere Harris. And now Ty's getting more opportunity and he's just kind of going to continue to earn him more chances to get on the floor. Yeah. What do you think Derek um, can, can be his impact can be his role as he gets more confidence Moving forward, because like you know, Luke Goody is going to come back here at some point. Sounds like within the next couple of weeks, he's going to have a chance to to start practice and then eventually get into games here. Um, and, you know, sincere Harris and Ty Rogers do some similar things. So, wh- what do you expect uh, out of Ty Rogers moving forward here? Yeah, I think that the rebounding. I mean, we heard a lot in the fall that he was leading this team in, in rebounds and a lot of practices. So second chance opportunities on the, on the offensive glass, being able to help them defensive rebound. That's something that you definitely expect out of him. Uh, the de- defensive progression, because it is a guy that is not built like a freshman. He's physically strong. He's a good athlete. He's got long arms to be able to help Illinois in, in that sense. And, uh, you know, I know that they talked about going into the year that he could maybe even, take some possessions away from Shannon having to guard one of the better players. We'll see if he can actually own up to that matchup and, and defend some of the better players in the Big Ten. But just being able to, like you said, uh, Grisil was someone at 6'7 that could back you down and, and was having a, a good stretch of late and was really key to Nebraska being able to win games. Uh, when he had good nights, Nebraska usually was able to be in those games and win. Uh, and for Ty to be able to step up in that sense. And then I think offensively, he's going to be able to make some of those finishes. I love him in the teeth of that defense. I think he's got good feel. I think he's uh, strong, obviously, can draw contact. Uh, and I think that his passing is still the the one thing that I saw a lot out of him as a high school prospect that maybe hasn't fully translated yet. I think he's got the ability to see the floor and deliver a, a variety of passes. I think just as he knows where certain guys are going to be and as the game continues to slow down, I think he'll be able to set other guys up in the middle of that defense. Yeah, there's a reason he was a top 50 prospect, and I think Brad kind of expected after Team USA, right, that the Ty could be as impactful as, as as any of the freshmen just through his defense, his rebounding, his tenacity. And if you can start getting another good uh, defender, both on the ball, another big body, it does make you more versatile uh, as you go down the stretch here. I think offensively we know he's just a put-back guy. He's uh, finish at the rim guy if, if he can. Uh, he's not going to give you a lot on that end, but uh, he, he can provide you uh, a lot of value, surely, Derek. So how do you feel just overall uh, about this team right now, Derek? Um, they started 0-3, but as we said, the vibes have to be much better about this team and just the eye test. They look like they're enjoying each other a lot more. They look like they're all kind of falling into the roles that they should be. Like I think Matthew Meyer can make a lot of money for himself 
by playing team basketball and hitting corner threes because he's ridiculously good at it and getting the free throw line. Uh, he, he can do that. Dane Dange is becoming such an impactful piece of this team as a starter. Jade Nepps asserting himself. Coleman Hawkins kind of settling in maybe you know better in the spread offense than he was in the kind of weave offense they were doing before. Um, so just how, how good should Illinois fans feel about their team right now? I think they should feel pretty good. And I still think the schedule sets up for you to continue a run. I know Michigan State challenged there and at the Cole Center tonight ultimately fell short. It's a, it's a good Michigan State team. They're not world beaters by any means. You get them on their home floor. A chance to just f- quickly flip an 0-3 into a 3-3 and in the league and, and really put yourself back into that middle of the pack in the Big Ten right off the bat was still after Friday. There'll be 16 more, or I should say 14 more Big Ten games left in the in league play and you go on the road to Minnesota. Uh, so I think that this team, and like you said, I mean, the eye test is just that they have an identity offensively. They have a lot of talented offensive pieces that are now figuring each other out. You got freshmen that really the arrows pointing up, I think on all of them. I, I think that that's the great part with Epps continues to get more comfortable and confident sincere. I know offensively leaves a lot to be desired, but you know what he's going to bring with his defense and, and Ty is starting to figure it out. So uh, and, yeah, I fully agree with Matthew Meyer. Uh, I mean, even some of the blocks that he's making uh, at the basket is, is someone that when he is fully engaged yeah. defensively and, and is making those right plays. So uh, I wouldn't, you know, say this is a Big Ten favorite all you know all right. over again. You're going to have to continue to do a little bit more than that. But the signs of a, once again, another Brad Underwood turnaround after some some early lumps, after embarrassing bragging rights, I know you did take that Northwestern loss, which was prolonged it and made us question some things uh, about where it ultimately was going. But the the recent signs are maybe Brad's figured it out. Maybe he's pushed a, a great button with the spread, which is in all in all honesty a ballsy call for somebody that didn't practice a lot during the summer. Within you know less than a month's time it says a lot uh, about what they've been able to do on the practice court. So they're going to have to push forward, continue to uh, further this, be able to take care of home floor against some good teams coming up. And, uh, but right now they're, the vibes are good and this is a good team. Uh, Michigan state did win, by the way, they, oh, they did win yeah, right? they ended up winning that game. Hogard just completely took over down the stretch. They've won seven straight. So this is a big game, right? Like the big 10 is so muddled right now, but I do think, we know what teams are capable of potentially winning 14 games needed to win the big 10. I think Purdue is kind of the leader in the clubhouse just because you know, Edie and, and those freshman guards have been so good, uh, but this is a big game. But as, as you said, the schedule still works out well for them. When you have at Minnesota, two home games against tough opponents, Indiana and Ohio state, but Indiana's banged up right now. Road game at Wisconsin is never easy. Be home against Nebraska, home against Minnesota in early February, late January here. Like there's a chance for the typical Brad Underwood turnaround. And I just want to illustrate this. Look at Brad Underwood in January to February through March, right? Like he, this is where they always seem to make these runs. Uh, they did it last year. They did it, of course, uh, in 21. They had a, a little hiccup uh, in, in 20 with a four game losing streak and, and Io gets hurt. But then you know, down the stretch, they win five of six. Like they find a way to do this. And, and Derek, I think this team is capable of it when they play like they have the last two games. You're going to lose some games in that stretch. But if this team plays like it has the last two games, the way they've been connected both offensively and defensively, I think this team is capable of being a no doubt NCAA tournament team and in the mix in the final couple of weeks in the Big Ten. Right. I agree with that. By the way, I'll take a lap for the Michigan State mistake. Joey will make sure I get it in and uh, we'll maybe get some evidence going. Uh, yeah, maybe a push up. That'd be good. Uh, but yeah, I think that defensively, that's kind of been a parallel between the years for Brad Underwood is having some pretty gar- darn good defensive teams. Defense travels, the whole narrative there about being able to come together and, and get a lot of stops. It helps you be consistent when shots aren't falling. Uh, I think the fact of Terrence being able to get downhill, if Terrence is going to be, you know, we talked about going to the year or in, especially after what we saw in Vegas, you know, that's the best guard in the big 10. I know Jalen Pickett's having a heck of a season, but Terrence, when he's at his best is I'll take him over probably anybody in this league. So uh, him leading the way, the fact that the freshmen are coming along, that, that Matt's 
looked a lot better. I mean, night and day from what we saw early part of November and now what he's shown here recently with the scoring, uh, more energy and a little bit more team basketball. Like you said, Coleman, this team's got all the pieces to, to go on an extended run. Will it still get muddled in what's probably going to be a league that is just a little wacky and, and still wondering, you know, how many elite teams? And uh, it's a very deep league. There are no gimmies. Uh, and for, for a team that still is, I wouldn't say that they're – you're not going to have another dip down and, and still be maybe not the, the roller coaster that they look like here of, of late. But uh, I think that, yeah, like you said, in the mix in the league, maybe not winning the league, maybe they're not consistent enough to do that. But in terms of the ceiling wise, building towards an opportunity to, to capture that ceiling in March is, is something they can do. So uh, yeah. staying off the bubble. Will, will help the, the stress levels, the message boards, and, and obviously the, the vibe around the team, which, like we talked about, has gotten a lot better. But they've got a lot of ingredients of a, of a team that can, can do some serious damage, and it's great to see that once again after some encouraging signs earlier on. Yeah, I don't even know if the expectation from the fan base, it, and understandably so anymore, is – win the big 10 be a top three seed in the NCAA tournament. Like I, I don't even think they, they care about that. Just get to the sweet 16 uh, and they'll be happy. So I think it's just about, you know, looking like a team that is capable of making that kind of run. I think the last couple of games they have, like is Wisconsin a world beater? No, they didn't have Tyler wall and Nebraska is obviously one of the worst teams in the big 10, uh, but just the way they've played, I can see the way they played tonight. They'd beat Michigan state at home. The way they played tonight, they have a chance to beat Indiana and Ohio state at home. Let's get to a few comments, Derek, before we let you go. Uh, TB said we have a lot of potential weapons, but it seems like our wins uh, and losses depend mainly on TSJ's offensive output. I'll say this, Derek, like they need him to score consistently. Like Brad talked about 10 to 15 for Jade Neps. I think that's pretty true, right? You need that out of a league guard. They need 15 to 20 a night out of Terrence Shannon. You, that, that's what you need out of your best player. They got out of Kofi. They got out of Io. That's what Terrence Shannon has to be. Yeah, I fully agree. I mean, you look at some of the best teams in the league in recent years, the ability to lean on Kofi for Illinois, what Iowa was getting out of Keegan Murray last year, and on down the list, Ohio State with EJ. When you have a, a stud that can just show up pretty much every night and, and be able to be a baseline of production and a go-to guy, we haven't seen also this team kind of have to play in closing time in a while. It's been a long time. It's been since Texas. They've been in those uh, – a neck and neck game uh, where they have to execute down the stretch. And I'm, I'm very curious to see, I'm sure it probably will be coming up soon, whether it's the Michigan state game, Indiana, Ohio state, probably one of those that the Illinois is going to have to find a way late. And a guy like Terrence is one that we saw it with IO. I'm not going to put him on that level, but uh, even with Trent last year, you know, to be able to make some clutch shots, the difference in winning and losing. Um, yeah. I think that his, his consistency is of, of most importance, but we've also tabbed, you know, Coleman, as someone because of his his ceiling and his passing as someone that that's really keying the offense there's no, there's no doubt the, the original point of just having a stud that can can bring it every night do it against anybody uh that's that's definitely Terrence uh, I, I think they need Terrence scoring to be consistent I think Jaden is in there like Meyer can do it when needed right that that's good to have Coleman can have those nights I think when Coleman has those nights but but Coleman to me is like the guy I want with 10 five and five like that that's what I want out of Coleman yes, every night it's not as many points like Terrence has to score uh Jay asked was Brad pissed after he left the press conference did he not like the questions uh he did he did give Joey some grief as he likes to do I know that yeah and he later, later told Joey you know he doesn't get many opportunities to bust his chops so he, he took that chance not today Joey that's what he's doing do you not yeah. know I mean we were the only ones that got questions in. Uh, we apologies if it looks like we tried to take it over, but we were the only uh, winning part. Yeah, the the only ones wanting to put up shots. So we got our volume in there. Uh, I don't think he had a problem with the questions. Uh, he said something that he got three more than Fred said he would. I don't know if he was talking about questions or anything, but yeah, he he took a little shot at Joey, and I'm here for it. I think a lot of inquire had about 40% of the, the media there. So, so representing there, uh, if nobody else wants to ask questions, you guys, uh, just keep asking questions. Uh, Derek, I do want to get your thoughts on Kentucky. They lost to uh, South Carolina yes. tonight at home. Um, not going so well for Owen chin there, man. It's kind of brutal right now. I mean, it, it seems like that well is really soured with Calipari. Obviously the early exit last year in St. Peter's and, uh, they went to the portal, you know, to get Antonio Reeves and they had, had CJ Frederick the year before. Now get him get healthy and 
it, it just seems like his model is all out of whack. And they, they've tried to add some transfers. They never seem to have enough shooting. Oscar's a, a really dominant player, but obviously not a, a jump shooter. And we, I mean, we saw with Kofi being able to space shooters around a, a big guy like that is going to dominate the paint. If you can't do that, you're you're easier to crash in on. So uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, there's there's buzz out there about you know Cal and Texas, or obviously, ever a lot of people are talking nationally about who's the candidates for Kentucky if Cal were to leave. So it'd be interesting if. Owen Chin after leaving, you know, within what two years would, yeah. would be no longer there, Kentucky. That that's just wild to think about. Is would that be a like if you're a Texas fan, like you're not upset if you get John Calipari because you know you're gonna be able to get talent, right? Not that talent's been Texas's problem. Can they do better? <laughs> that's weird to say. I don't know. That's a good question. I think that you know, one name that a lot of people are really high on is, is Jerome Tang from Kansas State. It would be, it would it be too much of an overreaction to, to go off of one season of, of Tang to say like we could get him or Cal and you know Cal recently a guy that's been oh, the first year coach yeah. yeah won a national title been to multiple Final Fours I don't know I mean there, there's going to be a lot of names in that mix but uh, yeah I think for for Owen Chin in particular it is kind of kind of interesting dynamic who is the next Kentucky coach would it be Sean Miller <laughs> maybe. I like Muscleman. I think Muscleman oh, makes, makes a lot of sense. Oh, I'm on the must bus, man. I love watching his teams. Someone that can really recruit. I mean, the, what he's doing in Arkansas right now and ba- balance the getting the five stars in the portal. You know, it would be with the line I fans would love because they'd hate it so much. Bruce Pearl to Kentucky. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I I chose violence today. You did. You did. You had to throw an Auburn mention, and people already burned. Auburn. After a feel good night, I just had to throw that walk <laughs> on the fire there. Uh, Derek Piper, that's a really good win uh, for Illinois basketball. They come home against Michigan State quickly. What do you, what do you think of that matchup? Because Michigan State uh, obviously is, is playing really, really well. But man, a Friday night at State Farm Center with Illinois fans feeling better about their team. Izzo's in town. Um, that's going to be a fun, fun atmosphere, man. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And a chance to, to go up against one of the top teams in the league. Now Michigan state four and one and uh, it's really good guard duo. Tyson Walker, AJ Hogar will be a tough challenge for Jaden Epps and Sear Harris in that game. Uh, some vets in, in this league going up against obviously a youth and can Terrence continue to be the best player on the floor. I think he's got a great chance to do that against Michigan state. Uh, you know, Sparty, usually a, a very physical team. Uh, I'm curious by the the matchup inside. Sissoko has not had the same type of early season outing since the Drew Timmy and Shibway matchups for whatever reason, whatever got into him there. I mean, he's, he's an is athlete. Sissoko, can, is Sissoko still the number one enemy of Illinois fans when it comes to Michigan State? Yeah. Have, have they simmered after a couple of years after Io's injury? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe they're still a little sour. Maybe yeah. even with Izzo, because he never got Io's name right either. He kept saying Ao. You know, he Ao's a really play. good player. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think it's a great matchup. Uh, Hauser, you know, you just got some proven proven guys on Michigan State and uh, Illinois, feeling really good about itself. Like you said, the the home crowd should be a, a huge advantage, and it's it's one of those one of those marquee matchups you always look forward to in the league. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Derek Piper, thank you uh, for joining us from Lincoln. Go enjoy Haymarket a little bit uh, and, and then write whatever you got. What are you writing tonight? I got two two options. I got the Shannon that I, I want to dive into because obviously he's shown yeah. a, a huge response here lately. And I think that Brad gave some really good stuff about and also Ty about making it about us. You know, they said that after the Northwestern game. Uh, they've been able to show that, obviously, literally with their offense, the way they're sharing the ball. But uh, Ty gave some some good color on how they've bonded even more off the floor. And uh, I'll focus in on both those angles. So I'll probably hit one and then the other and uh, also hit the road tomorrow for the eight-hour track back. That's right. Uh, not not quite 20 hours. How did you guys do it without music or podcast? Like, I understand. I can have fun with Joey. Yeah. How do you do it, Joey? I, I, I don't understand. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, this is still live. He, he huh? said, how do we do it without music or podcast? Did you guys just have the greatest conversation ever? Might have. Yeah. Might have. 
Did you figure it all out? Life. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll let you guys go. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Thanks for nothing, Joey. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. That's going to wrap up the Illini Inquirer podcast. Everybody, thank you for listening. Give us a follow rating review wherever you get your podcast. Check out all the content coming from Lincoln tonight. I'll have player grades as well. <laughs> so we just zoom in on Joey Wagner. Uh, find us on YouTube. You got anything for us, Joe? I got nothing, Warner. Trying to get out of here. Bar closes in three three hours. Okay. Got to get out of here. Uh, last call, closing time. Everybody have a great night. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time on the Online Enquirer podcast. <laughs>